Okay, so this video is based off of the first video I posted about interactive grass, which is basically just grass that reacts to physics. I've created an optimized version for this grass that activates and deactivates the functionality of the interactiveness of the grass if said grass is either beyond a certain distance or outside the horizontal field of view of the camera. Thanks to Roblox, we don't have to fully remove the grass from the workspace because the rendering system already ignores parts outside of the camera frustum, but we still have to edit the functionality. This method is fast and performant. You don't have to run this every frame and it regulates script activity so it doesn't run like 500 times a second. For the sake of this video, I have around 5,000 grass parts and I spawned in around 100 hitboxes, kind of simulating the hitboxes as 100 other players. I've also set up a loop that moves the hitboxes every 5 seconds so they'll constantly be moving and updating grass parts. You can tell which grass is deactivated from its color being yellow and then being activated from the grass being green. The same thing goes for the hitboxes. If they're out of bounds, they turn red and if they're in bounds, they turn purple. I've also set up a plugin manipulating the range of the grass activation so we can see how the script acts with a low activation radius versus a high activation radius. Okay, so how do we make this? If you didn't watch the first part of the first video, I recommend going in and watching that because you'll need the setup of everything before you go back to this video. You don't need the actual script from the last video because there's been a lot of changes from the last video from that script, so that you can skip over, but you do need the setup. This version also has reordered some of the functions, so if you did have the script from the last video, here's a list of the functions in the proper order if you want to follow the video chronologically. Okay, so first we're going to get the services here at the top. I'm using the same ones as the last video, plus the player service and the run service. Next, we're going to get some variables. We're going to get the local player and the camera. Um, we also want the hitbox, like from last video, you still want that. Um, we're going to have a table of all of our grass data, just like the last video. Another new variable, which is hitboxes, which will keep track of all of the hitboxes in the game, the ones where you weld it to your character. Then we're going to have a table of all the active grass parts. We're going to have a player connections and physics connections for all of our uh, script connections that we need to disconnect and reconnect to. And we're also going to have some constants. So this rotation C frame, if you don't remember from the last video, it was for whether or not the mesh was created a certain way and you need to rotate it a certain way in order for the grass to stand upright. Also have an up axis, same thing if the mesh was created differently then you're going to have to have an up axis for your C-frame. Some tween info. This is the tween info I used in the last video, so nothing changed from there. And we're going to have the constant of the square root of 3, so I just store that as a variable. These next few variables are all new. So we have time count, update time count, time interval, update interval, update count, and activation radius. So time count and update time count are going to be sort of the trackers for um, our render step functions from the run service. Um, our time interval and update interval, those are the intervals in which those uh, binds to the render step functions are run. And then we have the update count. It has a specific use case, so that's one. And then the activation radius is self-explanatory. It's the radius of all the grass that if it's within, let's say 200 for what it's set right now, if it's within 200 studs, then it'll be activated. And if it's beyond 200 studs, then it'll be deactivated. So eligibility changed and hitbox eligibility changed. They're both going to be sort of indicators of whether or not the script is going to update all of the parts. And then last C frame is going to be the last C frame of the camera C frame. So the tween function is the same as the last video, nothing's changed from it. Um, you take the name, the mesh, and the new C-frame that you want to tween the grass part to, and then you tween it, and then play, and then once it's completed, you destroy it. So this is a new function, it's activate hitbox, it takes in one argument, the hitbox instance. 
and we basically take from if you remember from the last video we had all of this code in the setup hitbox function we just move that to a new function by itself and i called it activate hitbox and this will run whenever we activate a hitbox whenever it's detected within the activation radius we also have deactivate hitbox like I said, it's done the same way as the activate hitbox, but now it just has an it just has its own function. Activate grass, same thing. Um, this one you only just change the can touch property. This brick color um, line of code you don't have to have it. I just had it for debug purposes. Deactivate grass, like I said, same thing. You don't have to have the brick color at the bottom. You can remove that. You can comment that out, whatever you want. Um, there is one change to this though. If you see on line 96, the grass instance um, dot pivot cancel. Um, if you have it from the last video, it would be destroy. You want to change that to cancel for a specific use case. If you're running through grass in first person, it might not deactivate as it's supposed to. So make sure you change that from destroy to cancel. Okay, set up grass. Like in the last video, it was kind of this. It's kind of the same thing, pretty much, except for in the table of the grass data. You want to change is eligible. You want to add is eligible and activation updated. Um, is eligible is going to be true at first, and activation updated is going to be false. So you want those two um, attributes added into the data. Remove grass is going to be a different function almost entirely you're gonna call the deactivate grass functions on that grass instance and then if that has a hitbox you remove the grass data from it and then you just actually destroy this hitbox since you're completely removing the grass so for setup hitbox you take in the hitbox instance as well and you check if it's at the center of the workspace and if it's not then you return and then if it is a descendant of the workspace you take it and you add it as a key inside of the hitboxes table. And that key is gonna be, it's gonna have a value of a table of is eligible and activation updated, just like the grass data, but this is just for the hitboxes. And then you activate that hitbox. For remove hitbox, you deactivate the hitbox and then you remove all the data inside of the hitboxes table. Okay, so now we have camera C frame changed. This is gonna run every time we detect that the camera C-frame is not the same as the last C-frame. It takes in one argument, hitbox only, which is a boolean, which we'll talk about when I go down through the function, but it'll take a control vector, which is the last camera C-frame's look vector, and it'll have a threshold, which is the camera's field of view, and then I'll add two as a cushion. So we desynchronize here, um, and then we check if that argument hitbox only is true and if it's not true then we'll loop through all the grass data and we'll determine its eligibility based on if it's inside of the horizontal field of view and if it's within the distance the activation radius so if both of those are true we say that the data is eligible and we change activation updated to false for that data and if it isn't within those bounds and the activation updated is still true, then we'll just set that to false and we'll say is eligible is false. For the second loop here, I have this highlighted in blue so you guys know it's not the same loop, but we look through the hitboxes now and for each hitbox we do the same thing. We check if the hitbox is within the horizontal field of view of the camera and if it's within the activation radius. If it is, we do the same thing. We say the data is eligible. We change activation updated to false so we can update it when the update function comes around. And then after both loops have run, we synchronize so we get back to a synchronous state of the script. Character added, it's the same function uh, verbatim from the last video you don't have to make any changes if you have the old version of the script but this basically says whenever your character is added we weld a new hitbox to your uh, humanoid root part and then we give it the hitbox tag so it, it um, gets all the functionality of a hitbox and your character is removing and you just destroy that hitbox 
so it'll clean up everything and then this new function update camera will be a part of a render step function so we're going to take in the delta time between frames which is a number and we take the time count and we increase it by that delta time and if that time is over the update interval we'll reset it and then we'll check if the camera moved or uh, if the camera in C frame is different. So if it is, then the update count goes to zero. The last C frame is now that new camera C frame and then we spawn the camera C frame change function. So the reason why we spawn it is because the camera C frame change might take more than a couple frames or more than the interval allows for and we want it to keep running through. We don't want it to pause or like lock up and get falling behind. For the else, the update count will increase if the camera isn't moving. And then if the update count is greater than four, then we'll reset the update count and we'll task that spawn camera CFM change hitbox only because hitboxes move, but if your camera isn't moving, the script won't update. So you could have hitboxes moving inside of your camera field of view but it won't activate because your camera hasn't updated. So this is a specific use case for that. So update activation, this will actually update the, or this will actually activate or deactivate the grass. So the update time count is increased by the delta time. This is also binded to our render step function, by the way. So you'll have the delta time argument. Um, and if it's greater than the update interval, then the update time count is reset and then it checks if any of the eligibilities of the grass has changed because if you move the camera and all the grass stays the same you don't need to run through the loops and activate and deactivate everything so if it's changed then you change eligibility change to false and you loop through everything and activate it if it's if it's activation updated attribute hasn't been updated and we do that for both the grass and the hitboxes so now on to the actual connections. So on the player added, you take the player connections like we had in the last video. You add the key of the player's name and then you connect the character added function to, to that. And then you also add character removing just in case for when it removes. And then for player removing, you disconnect both of those functions and you remove the key. The same connections we had in the last video for the collection service so get instance added and get instance removed you connect those to set up and remove grass set up and remove hitbox those are the same things as in the last video we also have two new event connections bind to render step for the camera update and bind to render step for the activation update i set these both at the camera's render priority simply because we're dealing with the camera moving around and we're waiting to see if the camera is actually in a different spot. So that's why I use the camera's render priority instead of anything else. And then for the first render bind to render step, we update the camera. And then for the second one, we use update activation. And then at the end, we loop through all of the grass, um, that all of the grass that's in the collection service and all of the hitboxes that have been tagged. And we set those up. And then for each player that's already in the game, we, set up its player connections and then if they have a character already in the game then we call the character added function on them so yeah that's how you optimize your grass um, you can change the activation radius that one is variable i would recommend between like 200 no more than 300 if you have a lot of grass and it's all in a dense spot you really want to kind of it's all kind of variable it's all for certain situations so if you have a game where all your grass is spread out and whatnot and you're not going to be seeing a lot of grass at once you could have a high activation radius but if you have a lot of grass like tons and tons of grass and you want this interactivity then you might need to cut back on some of the activation radius or some of the update intervals so yeah Comment below if you have any questions. Um, I hope this one was a lot easier to follow than the last video because I know some people were complaining about how they couldn't follow through. So I hope this one was a lot easier to follow. And yeah, have a good day.